So I have something to say. I failed my last round of my Google review. But the good news is I get to share my failure with you. <laughs> welcome, welcome back. If you don't know, my name is Ronald. Uh, this is my channel where I talk about coding, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle of a software engineer. I also give career tips here and there. If you're interested in that kind of thing, you know, subscribe to the fam. Let's get into it. For those who don't know what the last round of the tech review is, it's pretty much if you prove yourself as an excellent engineer, it will start throwing money at you. Typically in the last round of the technical review, there's five interviews, four technical and one behavioral. They can span between two to three days. In my particular case, it was a two day process. So I had two technical reviews for the first day and then I had two technical reviews and one behavior interview on the second day. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's start with day number uno. All right, so day one, interview number one. So after introduction, she instructed me to open up this built-in house editor. This led me to mistake number one. So I had all the Google interviews set up on my calendar and everything, but I didn't have the links to the in-house editors for each of those interviews. And those were in my emails beforehand. So one of the things I didn't check was, you know, go back to those emails because I think I got those like a month ahead of time. And I thought all the editor and the build house editor and the links and stuff would be on the Google Google invites. I was wrong and pretty much we spent a good majority of the time, a good, uh, not a good majority, but it was a couple of minutes at the very beginning of the interview trying to figure out to get this build in-house editor. We figured it out, we got it working and you know, everything was great. I was feeling great, feeling good until she put that problem on my plate. It was a string processing problem. And up to that point, I was doing recollection of like all the different problems that I did. And I didn't do no stream processing problems. I barely do any stream processing problem at my job. But when I do do it, you know, I do a lot of like, you know, researching and, you know, trying to do the, the Google and everything for it, ironically. All right, so this led to mistake number two. Um, because I lacked the confidence of actually solving the problem, like I did try to, you know, break it down and, and all these other stuffs. And I think the interview was also very helpful in, you know, telling me what methods I should be using in this particular cases or, you know, try to put into code what I was trying to say, what I was trying to do. And, you know, it was working, you know, I was getting there, but it's just like, I wasn't like very really comfortable of where I wanted to be with the code and I wasn't very fluent in putting that solution out there. So I wasn't overall confident and that, that confidence, lack of confidence when you're doing your interview, I think that, you know, definitely uh, showed in that particular case. So, you know, I think you should always, you know, feel comfortable, feel confident about what you're doing. And even if you're not that confident, you should, you know, still pursue that or um, pursue that, I should say, pursue that. So I'd say, you know, if I was to give myself a percentage of how I did in that particular interview, I give myself a 50%. So, you know, pretty much like an F, but you know, I uh, put it out there. All right, so interview number two. So, you know, I had a good 15 minute break and now I, you know, will start interview number two, the second interview of the first day. Before I started this interview, I pretty much powered up my confidence and was like, yo, I still got this. Um, you know, I can still communicate. I can still break things down. Let me continue to do that. Then you already know another stream processing problem got onto my plate. Yes, another one. It wasn't just a little bitty like little problem. It was a huge problem and I had to break this thing down. But it didn't shake me too much. I, you know, you know, read over the problem, read over the prompt and, you know, ask clarification questions and stuff and, you know, start working it out. So, you know, by working it out, you know, I broke down things in reasonable small chunks so I can, you know, solve different parts of the problem. And then I was able to communicate with the interviewer what the idea I was trying to achieve and, you know, start coding out the solution. And then all through the communication, it was like, yes, 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 you can assume that. Yes, you can, you know, go about, you know, excluding that particular case scenario, uh, but also keep this in mind and so on. I was making headway and everything, but time consumed my coding. So I would say I finished a good 90 to 90% of the solution with my code. Um, but I was able to communicate exactly what I needed to do 
um, for this particular problem. And I think I got that across. I conveyed that across with the interviewer. Interviewer, and yeah, that was. I think that was pretty good. But however, another thing that did carry over was mistake number one. I was not able to use the built the in-house editor, and I think that also played into my downfall of failing these interviews because, yeah, essentially mistake number one carried over to all these interviews. And for some reason, I didn't even think about looking into my emails to see if these in-house emails were built. So just know mistake number one is all in the, every single interview for the technical ones. So in this, I uh, say in interview number two, I gave myself a good 75% because I didn't finish the whole entire solution and you know, yeah, yeah it happens. So yeah, you know, overall, um, pretty average, pretty low score <laughs> for the first day. All right, day dos, interview three. All right, you already know mistake number one carried over and everything. Yeah, get out of the, get out of the way. However, I crushed it in this interview. I finished the code and I explained what I did and went through all the different case scenarios and stuff and how this code will be dynamically expanding. In this particular one, it was a stream processing problem, but it, it requires some pattern recognition and stuff. So that's that was something that was good for me because I'm really good at you know recognizing patterns. And I think another good thing that played into that is given that I knew that they were doing more stream processing problems, I did some studying the night before to like do some stream processing problems or get familiar with stream processing problems in general. And so yeah, I think that really helped me out and you know, I think that really you know, push me forward in this particular case. So I would give myself a hundred percent, a A, not A plus, but you know, A because you know it was great. I didn't have the built-in house editor, but um, I think everything went great with this interview. I got a hundred percent and I feel very confident about it. All right, interview quattro. All right, this was a very interesting interview. The interview was very rushed and you know very. Um, fast pace and they always they were just like all right here's the prompt start coding kind of thing and yeah it was, i felt like this person was very agitated and i was i was actually coding i was like hey how's your how's your day how's this going on you know he's like yeah i was just having a rough day kind of thing and stuff like that and i think it kind of like eased the tension there because i felt like he was definitely you know rushing me in this case and maybe it was a test i don't know um but i just felt the need to ask him how his day was because he was you know very agitated but you know through this interview i it was actually a recursion problem and yeah I did some stuff in regards to that recursion problem and finished the code ahead of time as i was talking and, and you know talking about his day multitasking boom and i even optimized the problem as well and i used the technique that i used in one of my coding um code videos that i did and it's called memo memo memoization memo memoization <laughs> all right i can't even say that word some memoization so yeah i use the memoization technique in order to optimize and reduce duplicate calculations and stuff like that so that was nice and i was really happy that i was able to use that technique and you know flex on a little bit that i was able to do that so boom yeah. so i would say i give myself a 110 percent because i got that optimization out and not that out really good and he was like yo all right thank you have a great day <laughs> all right so last interview and this is the behavior interview this one was pretty interesting myself. I, I will say this, I, I won't even give this a passive, uh, like a uh, hundred percent or 10%. I would say this is like a pass and fail type situation. So, you know, it's behavioral questions. That's all I really have to say about that. Can't really say exactly what questions they were, but um, because I signed NDA, but I, I remember this one particular question. I feel like it was an ethical question. And he just kept on asking me, like, so what you would do after that? What you would do after that? What would you do after that? What you would do after that? And probably after the sixth answer, I was like, well, um, at that point, I'm not exactly sure. What will you do? And then he said, um, well, I'm not taking an interview. I was like, okay, touche, sir, touche. And yeah, so I would say overall, I gave myself a pass on that one. Yeah, because 
it was it was pretty interesting. I mean, their behavior questions. There's nothing more to that unless you're a robot and you you don't feel anything. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, you, you won't pass this if you're a robot yeah all right and yeah that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed that video and you know looking at my my failures and my mistakes i say overall it was i would say a good um one two two mistakes in there now i would say i'm gonna add another mistake another mistake that i did was not fully preparing myself on the range of questions that i might have I've got because I think I mainly worked on like numerical or just like numerical type questions rather than thinking about doing stream processing problems when I first started out start studying again for this type of stuff so I think next time I'm definitely going to be more well-rounded on what questions I can do and yeah just go over the questions that I, I do previously and just continue to touch on that stuff and touch on those different topics so Improving my code and fluency will be very important. Improving my stream processing will be very, very important. And just um, go over a good range of questions and be, because I, I think my breaking down of the problem is very good. Like I can break down a problem really well. That's pretty much what I got out of that. I had a lot of fun during the interview. Like every single interview, regardless of the different personalities, regardless of the agitation of that one person, I still had crazy fun. And I think um, I'm always going to do like these type of interviews because I just really want to see like how they would test me and if um if I would get an offer and to whether I will accept the offer that all depends on like me and my lifestyle and you know other things that play into that factor yeah I think it, I think these interviews are really a good test to just test my skill as a software engineer and that's why I take them so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that um video I appreciate you guys watching it and I talk to you guys next time see you in the next one peace mm -hmm.